back. Rascate boy, no call it, I still roll these Young star, give me the beat and let me prove London City forever, you know I still cream Ain't no stopping me, ever you best move Live all get out with everything, we're not against them One white critic, like I play my big news Past few years have been interesting Interesting, definitely I feel like, you know, it's just been me Figuring myself out as an athlete As a young man um, And, you know, I think it's been a good journey Well, I'm still on the journey, but It's been good so far You know, I feel like Coming from remembering myself as being an upcoming junior, you know, all the way back in 2013, you know, winning medals on the world stage, European stage, um, running fast times, you know, that was like sort of the beginning of um, of my journey and of my career. But since then, obviously, you know, you become a you become a senior athlete and you don't win as many races. You know, you're you're sort of trying to find your spot in the world of athletics. You know, you've got people who are racing who are maybe even double your age and um, that comes with its challenges and I feel like um, these past few years have just been a case of me you know trying to figure that out um, you know I've had good successes in running personal best winning titles making teams but I've also had experiences of you know missing out on teams not running the times I've wanted to run and um, you know not making the progress in the time I thought I would make progress and I think that's all just you know contributed to where I'm at right now and where I'm at right now, I feel like I'm starting to figure out what I want to get out of my career, where I want to go with this sport, and um, ultimately understanding how I'm going to get towards those goals. So I'd say the past few years have been, in a nutshell, uh, a journey. For me, 2019 was one of my best years because of the context. I think I was coming from having a bit of a turbulent year, I'd say, in 2018. And for me, it was it was kind of like make or break to a degree. I know I'm, that sounds dramatic, but a little bit of that was the case for me. I feel like it was just like, just even how I sort of started that year, you know, the European Indoor Championships, a lot of sort of drama and politics around my selection and then being able to sort of make the final despite that was a big thing for me and I knew that that was setting me up for the summer season and there's one thing you know knowing you're good and knowing you've got the potential but it's a whole nother ball game actually delivering that under pressure and the biggest pressure probably came in that British Championships where I wasn't a favourite I hadn't broken 10 seconds like some of my other competitors and um, no one was really looking at me to qualify for the World Championships, but myself and my team sort of knew that we had something in the tank that no one had seen yet. And that's how I've always thought about myself in my career. I know I've got something to show, people just haven't seen it yet. And um, sort of the confidence it gave me, I felt, let me know that I was good enough to sort of be on the world stage um, if I get things right. And just having the temperament and the composure to deliver when you're not supposed to win um, was a big thing for me as well. And I think the reason why it was one of my best years is just because it, it, just, it just showed me that I belong on the world stage. And though I went to the World Championships and didn't make a final, um, the sort of encouragement and the progression that I showed in 2019 let me know that if I continue on the right steps, I keep on making the right decisions, you know, at some point I will find myself um, in the realm of the best in the world. And um, for me, that was more important than getting a one-off sub-10 clock in on a good day. Um, we're in the game of being consistent. We're in the game of delivering when it matters. And like Morris Green once said, there's only two days in a year that matter. And that's your national championships, and that's the championships itself. So I had a 50% success rate, but moving forward, I want to have a 100% success rate. And that's what I'm working on right now. So. 2019 let me know that I've got the potential to be where I want to be, and just a case of me continuing the path I'm on now. Twenty twenty one, my goals. I've got a lot of goals for twenty twenty one. I think um, having lockdown in twenty twenty um, gave me an opportunity to be by myself and to reflect on what I want 
for my career? What do I really want to achieve? I feel like when you get to a high level in sports, sometimes there's like, I don't know, sometimes like there's an assumption that you should just have certain goals because you're an elite. You know, you should just want to go to the Olympic Games because you're elite. You should want to be fast because you're a sprinter. But I don't think I ever had maybe goals that were actually personal and tailored to me. So that gave me an opportunity to really think about what I want to get out of the sport. And starting with 2021, um, the goal is obviously to be the best I can be. Uh, first and foremost, that's something I can control. Um, if I turned around, I told you I want to be Olympic champion next year. As much as that sounds great, I can't 100% control that outcome. So the first things first is for me to be the best that I can be. Um, but more specifically, we've got the Olympic Games coming up, which is a pinnacle defining moment for any athlete, but most specifically track and field athletes. Um, and for me, I think the goal as a British athlete is clearly to make an Olympic final um, and to do as well as I can if I get to that point. Um, I want to get under 10 seconds next year. I think it's something that I've been knocking on the door for a few seasons and I'm pretty sure if the wind was the other way at British Champs probably would have done that but I can't control these things. Um, but that's what I want for next year. Um, of course I want to get that British title back um, so God willing that will happen. Um, but ultimately just be faster, be more consistent um, and just put out good performances more often. Do you know what I mean? I think um, I'm definitely at that point now where you know I want to take my career to the next level, I want to take my performances to the next level and um, I'm very much a process over um, outcome type of person. So though I'm telling you outcome things, um, there's definitely a process that goes behind that. I've got an amazing team behind me that, you know, work hard and I work hard with them to make sure that I can get the goals that I have set out for myself. And I think you've got to put, you've got to put crazy goals out there sometimes, you know, to get the most out of yourself. If I told myself I just want to run 10-0, I just want to run 10-1, may end up running 10-2. You know, I feel like you've got to shoot for the stars. And for me, I'm always someone that believes I can achieve anything I put my mind to. My dad always told me that. So I've never lost, I've never lost that, that saying. So that's my goal for 2021. I think I definitely want to be remembered as the best to do it. You know, if in my country, at least, um, I feel like that's big shoes to fill because, you know, Liverpool was one of the best sprinters to ever do it full stop. And um, yeah, there's a lot of things that's got to be achieved to sort of eclipse what he has done. But, you know, you've got to have that belief that you can you can do it. And if you're going to aim high, you might as well aim for the highest. Um, but aside from that, I think I definitely want to be remembered as someone else easy to watch someone who was fun to watch um, and someone who provided some motivation to someone who needed it at that time. I think when I was young and growing up, I didn't really see a lot of role models in sport that I could emulate, you know, that were from the same background as, as myself. And I feel like I've sort of had to carve that lane out for myself. And luckily I'm at a point that I'm at now with a long way to go, but I feel like if a youngster can see my journey, can see hopefully the success of my journey, it can motivate them and encourage them to keep their head up, to shoot for the stars, and no matter where you're coming from, that doesn't determine where you're going. Well, if you've come this far, first of all, I want to say thank you for watching. Um, what can you expect from my YouTube channel? I would say you're really going to be taking on the journey to, uh, between now and the Olympic Games, and mainly the preparation. You know, as athletes, you spend more time training than we do competing, so I want to sort of bring you guys on what the process is to get to the point you see on, on TV, basically. So you can expect training videos, you can expect behind the scenes content, you can expect some Q and A's, some spike reviews, may do some one-on-ones on how to get faster. I won't say I'm an expert, but I can tell you a little bit of what I know. Um, but ultimately, I just want to bring you guys closer on my journey and document it. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do. And I'll see you guys soon.